starting off this art journey from 2007 to 2009. I had been drawing way before then as well but I think this is a really good place to start because I think this is when I started getting really inspired and seeing that art could be done as a job and my first realising of this was when I first picked up an issue of Girl Talk which is a weird magazine when I think about it and they had a special feature of Witch Comics. Now which comics were Italian, I think, comic about five girls, it was very inspired by magical girls and all that. And I remember the artwork just really hitting me and thinking, I want to draw like this. So a lot of the artwork from this era is not traced but copied heavily because I was 12 years old and that's what you do. So uh, it definitely inspires me even today if you go and look back at it. Though I can't actually remember being a person back then but that's a topic for another day. <laughs> This is also when I had my first journey into anime and manga, reading scans online and watching anime in three parts on YouTube. I... it was a different time. <laughs> in some time between 2007 and 2009, I had a massive Sonic the Hedgehog phase and Unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, I have no art from that era absolutely whatsoever. Which is funny because I remember drawing a ton of comics, a ton of fan art and a ton of fan characters. But all evidence of that phase has been, has just disappeared off the face of the earth. I cannot find any deviant art accounts, I cannot find any secret folders of art tucked away in the cupboard. Just every piece of evidence of that Sonic the Hedgehog phase has just been wiped clear and it's really funny too because I remember being that obsessed with it that my dad went out and specifically to buy me a how to draw manga book just to stop me from drawing Sonic the Hedgehog fan <laughs> on to 2010 to 2011. I wouldn't say I was like really deep in the internet by this time but I was fairly obsessed with the internet and all the things that I could do online especially since now I could watch cartoons, I could post my artwork, I could talk with people who were interested in the same things as I was. So there is a lot of Invader Zim fan art from this day and age. This year's obsession was How to Train Your Dragon and I absolutely loved that movie when it first came out. I am not keen on the sequels that followed after but it made me consider going into animation because I loved the idea of drawing characters and bringing them to life on a screen. There's a lot of experimentation during this time which I'm really surprised that I did when I was so young. I experimented with backgrounds, colours, realism, different styles and I think because I felt no pressure. This was just before college so there was no pressure on me to actually make anything. I just made stuff because I wanted to make stuff and honestly that was that was a good time, a fun time. Twenty twelve to twenty thirteen, I was at college by now. I had met my best friend Lethal Aurora Mage. While the first year of college was really fun, the second and third year not so great and the teachers were worried I was gonna have like a bad grade, they were pushing me to go to university didn't want to go to university, got good grades and I think my art kind of reflects how unhappy I was. It is grey, it's desaturated, there's a lot of monsters and I got told that my talent didn't lie in drawing faceless creatures and monsters and I think, I think that was kind of, hmm, I don't know, it was kind of a weird comment place where I thought there's no place in the art world for my kind of art then and I suppose I just, I definitely got sad about that and it affected my art a lot. I was watching a lot of horror and horror let's plays on YouTube. The biggest inspiration were those RPG maker games like Ib and the Witch's House. They, especially Ib, there's such an atmosphere in that game that I've never really seen remade again.
Coming up to the end of the college year, I actually got a lot happier because I had really gotten into Minecraft. I was already playing it at this point, but I got really into it. And you can kind of see like a drastic change in my art where I start using more colors. I start playing with backgrounds. I start drawing my Minecraft characters. Me and my friend, Lethal Aurora Maid, had started this ask blog where we'd make two characters and you could ask them questions on Tumblr and we'd draw the replies and we made this fun little story. I think Pokemon X and Y came out too. I'm not sure whether it's like 2014, whether it was the end of it, but that was my first ever Pokemon game. And I don't know whether it was the first video game I ever played. It probably wasn't because I was really into Minecraft. But those two things brought me so much joy. And I made like a load of online friends. And we had like a Minecraft server where we'd like build stuff. And I was probably on the internet too much. But I think this really brought me a lot of joy when I was really unhappy at college. And I think you can see that I'm kind of going back into my weird characters. And I did start experimenting with back grounds more and yeah I think you know I started using my sketchbook more and I think this just worked out well you know I, I started being happier with my art again and by this time I was actually thinking of starting my webcomic which at the time was called Winter Shade and it was a lot more apocalyptic themed but still like that magical girl element. I kind of like the old version of it better than what I actually made later. to 2016 it was a interesting time because this is the time that steven universe came out and i became obsessed very very quickly and it was all that i could draw and all that i could think about and i think it inspired my art in a lot of ways but in a lot of bad ways too listen i love steven universe it was great it there was so much that it did that no other TV programs were doing at the time. But it has problems. It's not perfect. But at the time, I really thought it was perfect. And I wanted to try and copy it in every way that I could. I really thought that if I studied this cartoon enough, that it would somehow make me a better artist. But this was also the time I was doing conventions, commissions. I was finally earning art money off my artwork and it was kind of who knew you could make money off of this but i feel like this is also where i fell into a strange trap of only thinking of what other people wanted to see in my art i only cared about making artwork that was to sell specifically so lots of convention stuff a lot of steven universe pretty art girl stuff stickers prints bookmarks trying to make all that and at the time i actually did well at conventions i had a good time i made friends and i really enjoyed the atmosphere of comic con also at this time my artwork got reposted to quite a few other websites reddit was the worst one and people they said my style was too angular too square uh, i got a lot of complaints that my characters look too manly i love angular art styles and at the time that wasn't popular again a big inspiration at the time was motor city which has such a unique square art style and I love it so much even now. In fact, I think it's inspired me more now than it did then. I absolutely loved it and I want to get back into doing that square art style but at the time I was very susceptible to the criticism. You know, when you get into that mindset of trying to sell your work, you kind of forgo your own desires. So yeah. Again, a big inspiration was Mad Max Fury Road. Again, love that movie so much. Definitely one of my favourites but again, I tried making fan art for it and it did so badly at comic at the comic conventions like nobody was really interested it was kind of a weird film when i think back on it but 
I mean, I loved it. But there's this one certain piece, and I think this is when I was drawing it, I was thinking, you know, I gotta make something good for Redbubble to sell online, to sell at Comic Cons. And as I finished it, I kind of realized, wow, I'm not actually happy doing this. But at the end of 2016, or maybe it was 2015, my friend introduced me to Paladin's Champions of the Realm, which, if we're honest, is a little bit of an Overwatch knockoff, but I would say I enjoy it more than Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> Which is gonna be really controversial. The characters were a dragon with a jet jetpack, a fox, um, a walking cannonball guy. My favorite character, obviously. <laughs> and I just had such a good time drawing those characters. Looking back on that Paladins fan art, absolutely love it still i look back and i really enjoy looking at it i don't know there's i think you can tell that i had fun drawing that So, 2017 to 2018, the Nintendo Switch had come out, as had Breath of the Wild, and of course, I became obsessed with this new game. First ever Zelda game that I ever played. Again, it was just one of those things that brought me so much joy, and of course, I did a lot of fan art. You can actually see the video of this fan art that I made. It's, I was taking YouTube quite seriously at this time as well. I was also like in full swing with my comic. I had already rebooted it once, so these were like the redrawn pages, so I was doing that too. I was making fan art for, again, comic conventions and trying to... This is a weird stage because I'm not exactly happy with how I was on YouTube, which sounds really weird, but I think I was going for a personality that wasn't quite me. It was this very soft-spoken, very aesthetic style of filming and i'd been inspired by a lot of youtubers at the time who were also doing the kind of aesthetic thing and while i think it's nice it definitely wasn't for me i felt like i really was pretending to be someone else and again i was trying to do artwork that would sell and i think the big kicker is this Boku no Hero Academia fan art for the last convention I ever did, which at that convention I was in terrible pain because I had an impacted tooth. And I remember getting these printed and being so excited about them because they look so good. You can actually see the vlog that I made where I actually got these printed. And I was so excited for them. At the convention, I think only one sold. That was like the worst convention. I mean, I had a good time because I made friends and I got to talk to people, I love that. But I made such a loss at that convention and all these prints, I think in the end, I did eventually just throw them away because they just wouldn't budge. By the time I had done that picture, I mean I'd spent a long time on this picture and I really like it when I look back at it but I wonder if people could tell that I wasn't really interested in it. I was trying to push myself to watch things that were popular just so I could make products and stickers and merchandise to sell. I wasn't actually interested in the series, I just wanted to try and make a living this is the time that i just i just gave up with conventions i also remember really disliking my artwork for the most for most of the year i don't know i kept feeling like i wasn't improving that my art needed to be better there are a couple of personal pieces too but again they're few and far between but the ones that i did make i ended up really loving Oh, and another big thing, because I was kind of getting into that aesthetic YouTuber personality, I spent, again, a lot of money on traditional art supplies because I thought the better the art supply, the better the artist I would be and the better my videos would look. And I ended up spending so much money on traditional art supplies and traditional art supplies that really I couldn't afford them. I should not have bought them. They have all been donated now and I I, I might have made the money back now, but I kind of doubt it actually. I, yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. And um, when I think back, I think I really wasn't being myself on those videos. And 
at conventions. I was really trying to push for this. I don't know what aesthetic I'd call it, but I was trying to be like a whole different person. And the trouble is I am, I'm a gremlin at heart. So yeah. <laughs> So on to 2019. 2019 is kind of a weird year but a good year. While there was points that I really hated my artwork and was really struggling with it, I actually made quite a few pieces that I really really liked. And I was still kind of falling into that thing of I wanted to make these beautiful painting videos with the uh, flowers and while I do love the gouache paintings that I did and the watercolour, I still don't think it was really me. Again, uh, I'm glad I experimented at the time, but it just wasn't for me. I still love these paintings. I really, really do. And um, I'm glad I did them, but I have given away, I've donated like most of my painting supplies. And honestly, I could probably even donate more. This was the time that I was having this massive declutter and I didn't want to hoard art supplies because I did feel very pressured to be able to use every single medium and and I think YouTube does do that to you. But anyway, moving on, I was getting really into video games. It's, it's one of my most favourite things now. I was getting so inspired from the games that I was playing and some of my favourites are Hollow Knight. Absolutely love that game, one of my favourites. Stardew Valley, great. Celeste, Celeste is amazing. And I don't see many people talk about that, but I love that. That is like a really difficult platformer and it has this really nice story about overcoming challenges. I love it. It's great. 10 out of 10. <laughs> so definitely loving the video games. This was also when I created Wilder, uh, who's like a character I made. He was originally a character for my webcomic. He was going to be like this one-off trickster troublemaker. Very, um, like a very traditional type of fae, you know, monster creature that I had planned in the comic. He caused lots of problems for the main characters. And as I was working on him, I thought, you know... I think he should be the main character <laughs> and I think he was definitely the catalyst for me quitting my comic so if you're sad about my me quitting my comic blame him it's his fault and while he isn't like that traditional trickster type character anymore he does cause problems and he is a massive troublemaker but now he's more in the the goth jock kind of himbo category <laughs> and causes trouble with Danny who is another character who got like a big remake. I absolutely love these characters. I may do something with them, I may not, who knows. But yeah, by the end of 2019, I was kind of realizing I want art to be something that I enjoy, not something I try to make money off. So that was 2019. So 2020 to 2021, we are finally up to date. And this is the point where I officially try trying to make art my hobby again, which is difficult because I put so much time and effort into my artwork and trying to make it work as a job that now I'm not actually sure what else I could do. But now I am definitely going to continue making videos because I do like making videos. I just don't like YouTube. I think it's a... Uh, a bad platform that treats its creative people very very badly so yeah but for now i'm going to continue making videos for art to be a hobby again has been so much fun and i'm so happy with my art now i haven't actually done any studies or you know tried to improve it purposefully like i used to but i find i'm actually liking my artwork more now that i'm not doing that so that's really surprising I'm working a lot more on my characters, especially Danny and Wilder. 
I don't have any plans for them, but I am kind of building this world that they live in and I'm making lots of characters and character designs that uh, maybe there'll be something in future, maybe not. I know I say that a lot, but it's because I, I'm trying not to get anyone's hopes up. I've also got new hobbies. I obviously I play a video game. I've really gotten into Lego lately. I'm trying to build like a cityscape. And I'm also really into scootering. I absolutely love scootering. And I'm just kind of enjoying all those other hobbies. And I'm just having so much more fun with my art now. I do feel very lost and at a strange crossroads. But I hope I can find a way of making a living while also not sacrificing my enjoyment of my hobbies. And not feeling the need to monetize every aspect of my life. Another thing, when I look at the drawings I'm making now, I feel like you can tell that I'm having more fun than I was before. I'm playing much more with my character shape. I'm sacrificing anatomy for style, which is something I never did before. But now I'm just like, who cares about the rules? I'm just going to make it look cool. And I feel like that's really helped with definitely some of the poses and the expressions. And I don't know, it feels more lively to me now. And with that, with us up to date of 15 years of drawing, I think I will actually end this video trying to condense 15 years of drawing into a 10 minute video is a lot harder than it sounds so I <laughs> hope you enjoyed watching it I hope you enjoyed the art journey that I've taken and tried to explain as best I can and I will see you all in another video so bye bye